All right, so let's cover the AP Stats Unit 2 content, everything you need to know. So, correlation. How exactly do you describe scatter plots? We're going to be using the acronym CEDAW. So, put in context, direction is a positive or negative, uh, stay in the outliers, the form, is it linear or nonlinear, and then the strength of that form. Okay, is it strongly linear? Is it weakly linear? All that mumbo jumbo. Now, tying directly into correlation and uh, describing scatter plots is your R value. Super important. Your R value is your coefficient, or sorry, your correlation coefficient, um, and it can range from negative one to one. The closer it is to negative one or one, the stronger linear correlation it has. So something like negative one is a perfect negative linear correlation. A positive one would be like a perfect positive linear correlation. Here's some more examples. Negative 0 0.97 would be considered a strong uh, linear correlation, zero would be no correlation, and something like 0 0.021 would be a weak linear correlation. Um, a couple of things that do not impact your correlation coefficient is changing your units, right? So um, if you, I don't know, multiplied everything by 100, does not change your R value. Also, if you switch the X and Y axis, that does not change your R value. Um, now let's talk about how outliers affect your R value. So any outliers that are within the pattern of data will strengthen R, any outliers outside the pattern of data will weaken R. What is the pattern of data? Well, I drew a nice diagram to represent it. So it's basically like the general trend that your points are facing. So this is like our general trend. So if I had a super out, you know, outlier, like you know, this, this star I'm drawing out here, that'd be within the pattern of data and strengthen R. But if we had something down here, right, that's outside the pattern of data, that would weaken R. Also remember, correlation does not equal causation. Super important here. You probably heard it before, so just keep that in the back of your mind. All right, so now let's talk about regression lines. So regression lines are essentially just your best fit line. So if you have a scatter plot with points, you put your best fit line on there, and it helps you estimate values uh, for uh, points that aren't, you aren't given, okay? Um, so what this looks like on the equation is y hat. You use y hat instead of y because it is your predicted value, not your actual y value. So it's y hat equals a plus bx. You, you know, you've seen that form before. a is your constant, b is your slope. Um, something you probably haven't seen before is your residual. Okay, so your residual is just the degree of error of regression line prediction. Okay, so let's say my actual value is 5, and the predicted value is 10. Then you get negative 5 as the negative 5 units as the residual. Um, so that's a negative residual. And negative residuals, that means you overestimated, right? You overestimated by five in that case. A positive residual would mean that you underestimated the actual value. All right, so the important thing with, uh, let's say, regression lines is that, yes, you are going to be calculating and extrapolating some values and all that, but I would say the big part is interpreting the regression line with proper language. This is super important. It's probably what's going to be tested on the AP, maybe on your midterm. All right, so here's an example. I just stole this methodology off my AP stat teacher, so hopefully it's not like copyright infringement, um, but it basically shows you the you know, one way you could use language to interpret the slope, interpret the y-intercept, interpret the residuals, all that, talking about stuff like explanatory variable, that's just the independent variable, your response variable, your dependent variable, and then using that you know, specific and really uh, correct language. And now let's talk about the least squares regression line. So basically you'll get a big data set and you're gonna plug it into your graphing calculator and then you can use a calculator function to produce the least squares regression line. It's the line that minimizes the sum of the square residuals. You don't need to know what that means, but basically it's like pretty much a best fit line, sort of. Um, so the key things you need to know about this is that you can also find these values, by the way, with your calculator. The S value is your average distance. The predicted values are away from the LSR. Um, and then your R squared value is the coefficient of determination. That's a percent of your response variables that can be explained with the explanatory variable. And for a optimal least squares regression line, you want as low of S value as possible and as high of the R squared value as possible. Also, sometimes on the AP, you're gonna see, or well, I would say sometimes, you're gonna see this, the computer printout, okay? It's kind of weird, I know, but you might have not done this in class. There's just something to keep note of is just these like computer printouts. Um, this is a nice graphic. It shows you where the y-intercept, the slope, S value, R squared value, yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll learn these other things like TMP and leader units, but basically, yeah, just like memorize these values where they are and all, um, just so that if it shows up, you aren't just caught, you know, not knowing what to do. Okay, so let's talk about outliers. Okay, so how do outliers, oops, how do outliers affect your least squares regression line? Any outlier, okay, is going to decrease your correlation, 
Now, here's the thing, right? Outliers are added far away from the mean of Y, so that's going to be a horizontal line. That's going to decrease your slope and also increase your Y-intercept. And the outliers are added above the mean of X, so this case is a vertical line. Your slope stays the same, your Y-intercept decreases, and if it is added below the mean of X of that vertical line, then your slope is going to be the same, and your Y-intercept is going to increase in this case instead of decreasing. So the last thing we're going to cover now is residual plot. So it pretty much just plots residual values versus the explanatory or independent variable. If there's a clear pattern, that means a linear function is unlikely to be the best fit for the data. If it's an unclear pattern, that means a linear function is likely to be the best fit for the data. And here is an example of an unclear pattern. Um, you can see it's just like pretty much random dots. So in this case, a linear function would be likely. Something like a clear pattern would be like, I don't know, I'm just going to draw something random. Let's say this was the line. And it goes something like this, right? Like a U-shaped parabola, whatever. That means it would be unlikely for a linear function to be best fit for that data. So that does it for all the content you need to know for AP STAT Unit 2.